So Cricket West Indies started off this Friday by announcing the fixtures for the upcoming ICC Cricket World Cup set for June in the Caribbean and the United States of America. 20 teams have been split into four groups with the opening fixture between the USA and Canada to be played in Dallas on the 1st of June. The Windies will compete in Group C along with New Zealand, Afghanistan, Papua New Guinea and Uganda with matches set for six countries in the Caribbean, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, there is uh, St. Lucia, um, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Vincent and the Grenadines also hosting matches. Another marquee matchup uh, set to, to be um, expecting a lot of attention drawn to them. The India versus Pakistan match set for New York on the 9th of June. Chief Executive Officer of Cricket West Indies, Johnny Grave, joins us via Zoom to discuss these latest developments. And uh, uh, Johnny, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Always great to have you on our, on our show. And uh, it's now on our doorstep. We are months away, but I know in the organizational um, landscape, um, we, 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 are, we are on, on the doorstep now of hosting this event. How, how excited are the CWI executives uh, for this one? Yeah, look, good evening. Happy New Year. Great to be here as always. And uh, yeah, look, this is a really exciting moment. We probably hoped it would happen in 2023 rather than 2024, but it's great to now have the match schedule um, confirmed um, and announced. And um, really now all of the pre-work that we've been doing in terms of setting up the tournament now really can can go into um, you know fast track because we we know all the matches, we know all the, the destinations, and now it's all about um, yeah doing the finer details of the planning and get, getting ready to what will be, without shadow of a doubt, the biggest sporting event that's ever come to the Caribbean before. Yeah, we know that um, you had an... And a press release coming out of the CWI earlier on this week about some organizational changes, which included some of your staff shifting to ICC duties. We know this is an ICC event, but because it's being staged where Cricket West Indies has jurisdiction, uh, can you just outline to us exactly what role the CWI officials will play here? Because I know it's an ICC event, but can you just make a distinction as to the role that Cricket West Indies has in this in this uh, championship? Yeah, so we're very much the lead host. We, we've signed the host agreement directly with the ICC. We are the full member that's hosting it, and um, we'll take a lead role and uh, rely on the United States and our partners there to, to manage 16 of the matches of the 55 that are coming. Uh, we've got all of the Super 8 stages. We've got all of the... The, the sort of the, the biggest games, the semi-finals and finals happening in the West Indies. And yeah, it's a huge tournament. I mean, the budget alone is going to be in excess of 100 million US dollars. Um, probably the operational staff for the event will be bigger than Cricket West Indies by the time uh, we get into May and June. So a lot and a, a decent number of our most experienced and senior staff will be working uh, directly now on the event from January onwards. Now we finish that big England tour that we had before Christmas. And, um, yeah, for all of us, uh, particularly Cricket West Indies, we retain all of the ticket and hospitality revenue. So it's really important that we maximise the opportunity because we want this to be not just a cricketing legacy and success, but we also uh, want it to be a financial success for Cricket West Indies. Yeah, and can you just uh, illustrate the point you made earlier on, Johnny, about this being the biggest sporting event ever being staged in the... Caribbean because the region did host the 2007 Cricket World Cup and the T20 World Cup in 2010 as well. Yeah, look, it's it's the biggest event in terms of numbers of teams. There's 20 teams from across the world now coming. Uh, it's 55 matches um, being played. It's been played in a shorter time window than obviously 2007, uh, but T20 cricket has taken off. So in terms of most of the stats, in terms of uh, the, the the monetary value of the tournament, in terms of the budget in terms of the the number of eyeballs um, that will be watching this game, uh, it will break uh, all records and surpass 2007 and, and 2010 when we hosted matches before. So this this will be uh, a huge event, billions and billions of people around the world watching it. Uh, obviously, the subcontinent provides a huge number of that uh, percentage of that. But again, matches are going to be played in the morning and in the evening. Uh, to try and balance that subcontinent audience as well as making sure that we can make as many of the matches, particularly those that have been played 
in the West Indies accessible to our fans as well. So uh, a decent percentage of the games will be played at night uh, under lights in the Caribbean. Yeah, a lot of work to be done, Johnny. I have to ask you, though, have you had a conversation, of course, with those in charge of the pitches? Because pitch condition and, of course, ensuring that the stadium is very welcoming because there's going to be a lot of tourists, you know, visiting to watch this, what I think is one of the biggest show on this earth because everybody looks forward to a good ICC World Cup. How much work has to be done in order for us to get ready for June and ensure that we make an impact and leave that sort of legacy that I'm sure you and your administration would want. Yeah, look, I think when we hosted the Women's World T20 in 2018, we got the balance right in terms of being able to, um, as much as possible or as much as we would want to, um, comply with the ICC regulations of such a big global event Obviously, the security threat, everything is amplified. But what's really important is we still allow our fans in the Caribbean to attend matches and watch cricket in the way they want to watch. And I think by all accounts, and obviously I wasn't here in 2007, I don't think the balance was necessarily struck between local fans and how West Indians want to watch their cricket and how ICC tournaments had been run historically. So we expect fans to be able to come into the grounds to, to bring the the music, the drums and everything that they would want in terms of watching the game to create that unique uh, Caribbean carnival atmosphere in our stadiums, but also make sure that we comply with as much as possible with um, those slightly restrictive ICC um, regulations that they've had in the past. So I think that's the first thing that, that we need we need to get right. Um, but as you say, T20 cricket is the most exciting format of the game. It's the game that's growing rapidly. And obviously with 16 matches being played, in the US, eight of those being played in that New York tri-state. You know, we're really trying to make a statement in the US and to, to build up to uh, the announcement that was made at the back end of the year with the um, the Los Angeles Olympics happening in 2028. So, um, yeah, there's lots to look forward to. It's a hugely exciting time. And you're right, Mariah, we've, we're trying to schedule at the moment the West Indies Championship between February and, and Easter, and um, yeah. despite having lots of venues, um, the choice that we have is actually now pretty limited because so much work is going to happen across those T20 World Cups. We're talking about pitches being relayed. We're talking about squares being expanded, practice facilities being massively improved. And, and that's a really exciting legacy for us because uh, for us, we with now so many teams from the academies, the under-19s, the women and the men, we... we we need and have a much greater demand on, on facilities. And it's an area which we think will be one of the biggest legacies for Cricket West Indies and for the sport in the region will be uh, much improved playing surfaces, but also significantly enhanced and expanded practice facilities. Right. And I don't envy you at all because while working on the logistics, you still have the title uh, CEO of Cricket West Indies, which means, you know, you're still under pressure when it comes to the team performing. So how do you feel about the group that West Indies is drawn in? Well, I don't think there's such a thing as an easy group. And certainly in T20 cricket, we know now with um, with 20 teams, there are probably this will probably be the biggest uh, ICC event in terms of numbers of upsets as well. Um, we've seen that and been on the wrong end of it in the past. Um, but yeah, look, I think... Um, Obviously, we're coming off the back of improved T20 performances. We, we we beat South Africa last year. We beat India last year. And we beat England last year. So hopefully, under the leadership of Darren Sammy and Robman Powell, we've got some momentum and confidence. Playing at home in front of our home fans will be, I think, a massive boost to the team. And um, yeah, look, we're, we're going to be confident. We're, we're not just looking to host this event. We are looking to win it. We want to win that third title. And um, yeah, it's an exciting time. But you're right, we've got our under-19 uh, women's team, who are 12 months out now from their World Cup, arrived in Antigua yesterday. Uh, our uh, under-19 boys are leaving uh, over the weekend to head out to South Africa for their World Cup campaign. And the men are already in, the test team uh, for the men are already in Australia, about to play their four-day warm-up game in Adelaide before the first test match. So, um, yeah, there's, um, there's no shortage of work and there's no shortage of cricket being played both here in the West Indies and, uh, and and around the world with our various teams. Right, and Johnny Barbados hosting the final. That's a big, big, big deal for Barbados. Do you think, you know, it can draw the attention and the atmosphere that you would want for a final? Yeah, I think so. Look, we sold out the uh, the England game uh, just before Christmas. I was there in 
at Kensington for the CPL matches and, and the place was packed and, and rocking and, and actually great to see, you know, a huge number of local fans, not just from Barbados, but people who have flown around the region into Barbados to support uh, the West Indies or get behind the CPL. So, yeah, I expect Barbados to be full of cricket fans come June. And, um, yeah, I think that there's no bigger occasion than the final. And um, we know Kensington's hosted it in the past in mo most recent times the the under 19 final was played here in Antigua and the plate final in Trinidad and in 2018 it was played in, in Antigua so uh, we know we're, we're blessed with some fantastic venues and iconic venues here in um, in the Caribbean and and you know Kensington is is right up there and a, and a worthy host uh, and, and, a, and a very popular destination for West Indians an easy place to get to but also for fans around the world uh, an easy uh, destination to get to with so many international flights landing on a daily basis into into the airport at Barbados. Yeah, they did host the 2007 World Cup final, didn't they, as well, between Australia and, and Sri Lanka, Johnny. Um, let me ask you this, though, because there is a move to um, explode T20 cricket in the United States of America, and you alluded to the fact that Los Angeles hosting the Olympics in 2028 are expected to have cricket on the, on the agenda as part of the, you know, one of the participatory sports. But how big is this Eisenhower Park clash in New York between Pakistan and India? That, that has the potential to be a tremendous event for the, for, the, for the viewing public, not only on television, but the fans watching Pakistan against India, the greatest rivals in international cricket. Yeah, look, I think it's, it's our version of the Super Bowl, to use that U.S. language. And, um, you know, this... this stadium that we're building in Eisenhower Park in, in uh, Nassau County in uh, Long Island, New York, is uh, is the first of its kind for cricket. It's um, We're probably going to make announcements over the coming weeks with more and more detail. The work is about to start on the construction of the stadium in, in the next few days. And, um, you know, it, it's an unbelievably ambitious uh, and game-changing moment to build a stadium uh, in a park uh, that doesn't currently, as we sit here now, exist. Uh, the pitches have been growing in in South Florida now for a few weeks. Um, Drop-in technology is well used uh, across the world, particularly in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so the last T20 World Cup that was hosted in Australia in 2022, most of those pitches were, were drop-in. So the technology is there. We've seen lots of US grounds convert quickly for Major League Soccer, et cetera. So in terms of outfield preparation, we're confident that that can work. But And we've seen modular stadiums being built for Formula One across the US. But it's never happened before for cricket. It's going to be 34,000 um, seats uh, in, in this stadium um, that's going to be solely used for the T20 World Cup in June. And um, yeah, we hope it will be a big statement for the sport in, in the New York Tri-State area. And, and the legacy then will lead hopefully into the Major League Cricket Tournament that will happen in July um, that will be expanded from the, the start that they made last year in, in Dallas. And um, yeah, we're, we're all geared up really for cricket also to be back in the Olympics. So hopefully it bodes well. It's very ambitious. But to be honest, if you're going to do anything in the US, you have to be bold and you have to be ambitious. And, and cricket needs to do that to grow the sport. And the West Indies, we need cricket to grow in this time zone. As I said many times before, we can't wait for the world of cricket to share its revenue. And we'll never stop arguing and lobbying for that. But at the same time, we've got to be strategic and try and make... Um, a step change for the sport uh, here in the Americas. Yeah, and um, you know the, the India-Pakistan clash in, in New York is apart from the fact that it's that inimitable rivalry between Pakistan and India. These are solid teams. Pakistan were runners up to England in the last T20 final, and India are world number one in the format at the moment. So that's going to be a big one. But quickly before you go, um, Johnny, um, the, the Super 8s, as you just mentioned, the top two teams from each group in the first round will qualify for the Super 8s. All Super 8 matches will be in the, in the Caribbean. And um, uh, it's expected to be really big, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Hopefully there won't be too many massive upsets, but obviously from a cricket perspective and a fan perspective, um, it's always good to see some other teams losing um, to some some lower rank side. You never want it to happen to your own. But yeah, the Super 8s, we've actually predetermined if the top teams qualify, they'll maintain that position within the Super 8s. So uh, if West Indies qualify, or should I say when West Indies qualify for the Super 8s, we know where they're going to play. So hopefully it will be easier for the fans to, to be able to pre-book the Super 8 stages um, knowing that as long as their team qualify, they'll qualify in a set position. 
And obviously, if they don't qualify, then uh, whoever does qualify um, replaces them. So the Super 8s is structured in a way that hopefully will allow flan fans to, to plan for the Super 8 stage, book tickets in advance, book their accommodation in advance. And you're right. I mean, who, who's to say that India-Pakistan won't be a repeat in either the semi-final or final? But clearly, obviously, we're hoping that West Indies will make it all the way to Kensington and, and to lift the third trophy because that's been our focus since we... Um, that we, we won the bid and that's been the focus since Darren Sammy and Rodman Power were appointed into those leadership positions and certainly it's one that we're all hoping will happen come June the 29th. Yeah, well, thanks, Johnny, for talking to us. Um, we'll be in touch, I'm sure, in the, in the coming months and, uh, you know, there's a, a buzz that you get uh, no matter how big the event is, when the fixtures actually come out, you start to feel the event a little bit, a little bit more. But thanks, Johnny, and um, uh, take care, have a good weekend and we'll talk again soon, I'm sure. Thanks so much. Take care. Yeah, let's go to break now. We'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.